Welcome. Hello, Chip Dippers. Welcome to another Quick Bites retro recipe without all the bells and whistles. Thank you. Well, I thought today we'd give you a little update on the 8-Bit Guys Commander X16 project. Now, as some of you may know, I am lucky enough to be involved in that project, something that she's completely bored of hearing about. Uh, so I'm the visual design coordinator for the Commander X16. Basically, I am in charge of everything to do with the exterior design, look, feel, uh, as well as the way things look on the screen, right down to user guides, uh, box, logo, keyboard, case, and all of that jazz. And indeed, that's what I'm here to give you an update on. So firstly, let's start with the case. And that is the case, isn't it? Yes. Now, as you may know, we're gonna be using off-the-shelf parts. That's the whole kind of ethos of the Commander X16 after all. And that's gonna cut cost, cut development time, and cut the number of times Puppy Fractic touches my arm. Where did you go? You're too quick for me. Okay. So with that said, I showed you a design in the last video by the 8-Bit Guy. And that design is now going to become our phase two design. Phase one, the first release, is actually going to have this case and keyboard. Now, the reason this is a bit larger is basically the smaller case we realized won't allow the height of expansion cards that we want. We want this computer to be very much like the Apple IIe. And that obviously is quite a tall and large unit. So that's going to be the case here, literally. So you can slot in uh, up to four expansion cards in there with enough height to do so. So that's why we've gone for this new design. And you can see me here just prototyping up some of the front panel using a 3D printer. And on the front panel, we've got a power button, a reset button, but that reset button is gonna be reconfigurable. So you're gonna be able to unplug the cable from that and put it onto different headers on the board to control different things. And all the business side of things takes place at the back of the machine, as you'd probably come to expect. Now, I know that a lot of people prefer that kind of all-in-one design where the keyboard is integrated with the unit and feel that a retro computer has to be that way. I do just wanna reiterate that this is a modern retro computer. We're not trying to kind of regurgitate the past and make another Amiga 500, for example. We want it to be functional. There were a load of computers back in the day that had separate keyboards. I mean, Apple Macintosh is behind me, SX64, the Amstrad PCW, and so on and so forth. Here's a few more that you might know and love from back in the day that had a separate case and keyboard. And that Amstrad PC-1512 is actually hiding right over there. But there is a functional benefit to that as well. Usually with an Amiga or a Commodore 64, all the cables are right at the back of the keyboard and the keyboard has to be at the front of your desk, meaning you could have up to seven, eight cables trailing across your desk, around or under your monitor. So with this, you can push all of that to the back of the desk. You just have the one cable on the keyboard trailing to the case. So we think there is a, a functional bonus as well as saving us maybe a year or two and a hundred thousand dollars or so if we were to develop our own case and keyboard combo. Speaking of the keyboard, hang on cable. As you may have seen, this is the Deluxe Commander X16 keyboard. Smells good, yeah? 
Now, I have to stress, this is not manufactured or sold by us. This is a partnership with WASD. But we released this just by popular demand from some real keyboard connoisseurs who wanted a proper micro switch option. You can use this right now with the emulator. It comes with a USB plug on the end of this long cable and a PS2 adapter. So you can use it with the X16 itself. But again, it's just an option until we get the real thing, which is right here. Now this is a prototype. These are not the final colors. You can see the final colors right here. But we worked with the manufacturer of this, which is Perix Design. You can go to perix.com and this is known as the Perry Board. Yes, I'm perifractic, but that's definitely not the reason I chose this company to work with. Um, I promise you that. However, one of the reasons I chose them is that they provide and still support PS2 standard for keyboards, which was fantastic. This isn't going to have even a USB adapter. Since the uh, second video and the second update, thank you very much, you can try it. We increased and improved the keys as well. Uh, they were much flatter before, and now they're super ergonomic and they raise up a little bit more. So this is definitely, uh, I mean, for a, a good value keyboard, this is fantastic. You're going to love it. Lady Fractic, do you have anyone you'd like to thank? Oh my goodness, I would love to thank my agent no, no, no. and my... PCB way. Yeah. I'd like to thank Perseverance Way for all their help with the X16, because as we all know, PCB stands for printed. No, 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 it's, it's prototype creation buddies. Prototype creation buddies. That's the case in keyboard. What next? Well, we've released our nomenclature. Nomen nomenclature. Uh, Yes, our naming standard for the three phases of the project. There's the X16P, X16C, and X16E. Because as we all know, PCE stands for Pro Compact Enhanced. Now, officially, they don't really stand for anything, but you could think of that as the naming standard. And that's going to enable you to really easily tell the difference between the different phases when each one comes out. Uh, and of course, the umbrella name for the whole project remains Commander X16. You'll see that on the keyboards. Only the name on each different case slash motherboard will change, so you know what is what. You know what's what. What else do we have to update them? Oh, the user guides. So we're gonna have two user guides. And Puppy Fractic actually stars in them. She's the mascot for the user guides that kind of talks you through things, takes you through setting up and programming your first basic program. And the first user guide is therefore called Just the Basics. And the second user guide is the more advanced one. That's gonna be called Assembling Assembler, get it? And that's our programmer's reference guide. Now, as with all good retro projects, I have put together a fantastic cover. Uh, I'm so excited to share it with you. I'm not gonna share it with you because we want you guys to see that when you first get the product. I'm not even gonna show you. You're colorblind anyway, just like me. Um, but don't fear, even though I am colorblind, uh, I just sketched out the design. Um, it was inspired by Oliver Frey, who you'll know from Zap64 and Crash, designed all the covers for those and still does actually. And I then handed that design inspired by Oliver that I'd drawn over to the incredible Trevor story to paint up the final one. You're gonna also see that on the box for the product when it arrives. The only other thing we've changed is the logo, uh, with the help of the community, now looks even more accurate, even though it's designed on the basic screen using nothing but Petsky characters. But we've got it looking almost exactly like the original artifact. And it, I wonder, I guess it will be an artifact. Hmm. I think that's it. Oh, the website, of course. We've developed a fantastic website with an integrated software library. Uh, that was designed um, with the help of Matt Grandis. And if you need a web designer, please seek out Matt. He is truly a joy to work with on these kind of projects. So yeah, we've got an integrated software library, full support forums, uh, and even a web-based emulator. So any of the programs in the library, you can hit try it now and they'll load and run right there in the web browser. So you don't have to put things on the SD card that you may not have wanted to do. So check out the website. That's where all the official stuff is gonna be firmware updates, user guide PDFs, and of course the crowdfunding when we launch it is going to be on commanderx16.com as well. I think that's it for this little update. I am so excited for us to finish up the board. We've got a few more things to do. I'll let David tell you about that. But from me and Puppy Fractic, who has now decided that it is time for bed, 
I'll now say thanks so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another delicious retro recipe. Until then, cheerio. Wait.